Um, this is a center that everybody's going to want to do. There's certain ones that we recommend everybody do, and then we'll tell you which ones are the ones where you can tick between two of them. Um, this um, one focuses on twigs, and there is a different activity for both. Um, if you browse down to the bottom or whatever, it says twin twigs game. There's going to be a section of this that's for kindergarten and first grade, and I'll go through that in a minute, and then there's going to be another section for second grade and through fourth grade. So the first one, and both of them, you're going to be going through the anatomy of a twig. So I'll go with that. Um, I made a huge cheat sheet. Okay. I made a cheat sheet in the back. Um, and if you didn't pick one of these up, I think it is actually on gold paper that I ran it off, how to be a twig detective. Um, when you go to explain this chart to both from kindergarten through fourth grade at the very beginning, you always go through the semi-boring chart stuff first and then get on to the hands-on stuff so they're actually going to pay attention to this part. But um, I call this a quick outline or cheat sheet that can be used when describing diagrams for Center 1 and Center 5. Center 5 is going to be outdoors. And you can use the same information when you go to actually look at this stuff outside. But um, have you ever explored the miracle of buds? They're easy to find. They come in a variety of sizes, shapes, and colors. Um, and then basically you're going to go through... Hold on, I think I'm missing one thing. Um, this is a big poster. All buds they're on a twig, they're either going to be alternate or opposite, opposite meaning on either side of each other, alternate meaning different spots on alternate sides. So that's the main thing. Um, it says on here opposite buds you're going to find on maple, ash, horse chestnut, and dogwood trees. Those are just a few examples. And alternate buds you're going to find on elm, oak, and birch, and many others. Those are just a few examples. Okay, then below bud, you need to look for a leaf scar. So this is actually, let me try to zoom in on this. There is our leaf scar right here. And a leaf scar is left when the leaf fell in the autumn. And on some twigs, they're really big and obvious, and sometimes they're really tiny. They differ for each kind of tree. And they have um, tiny dots or bundle scars, which are at the end of the veins that transported food and water between the leaf and the twig. So those are those little tiny dots. Um, they may form a pattern or resemble a face, um, like in the walnut and um, butternut twigs, they look like faces on there. So, um, and there's a handout that kind of shows that. Uh, I don't know what to get out. But you don't want to spend too much time getting into the nitty gritty details. You only have 15 minutes. Okay, then buds are protected by several scales. So here's a bud scale scar. Um, they cover the bud for protection in winter. And um, the willow is the only variety that has a single cap-like scale that covers the bud, such as when we see pussy willows and stuff. Um, and then there is a thing called a terminal bud. This is the right here. Um, that's the end of the bud, okay, and, and you're, not all trees have a terminal bud. Um, the largest bud, it's at the very end, such as in the maple. It can be a huge cluster of a whole bunch of buds. Um, it marks the end of a growth season. The twig have no terminal buds, and um, twigs with no terminal buds, the twig will keep growing until the food supply gets cut off. And then it dies back down at the last lateral bud. And there's some examples of trees that do that. And then it says, can you find lateral buds or side buds? So on this one, it doesn't show that. It's on this other diagram. Here we go. There's a lateral bud. So you're gonna, you can flip back and forth these two um, diagrams. There are buds along the side of a twig. They're usually large, usually larger buds contain flowers, while small ones contain only leaf buds. Um, and then you ask, do you have little raised dots here and there along your twig? They are lenticles. 
They are openings which allow the twig to make, um, these are these little tiny things. They're all over a lot of the twigs that I have. Um, and they are openings that allow the twig to take carbon dioxide in and release oxygen. And then they may be dark colored or light colored. They may be dots or lines as in birch trees. And then it says, do you see a few inches from the tip of your twig several lines or rings close together? Those are the growth rings. And that's, it's also called the bud scale scar. Um, they are left, um, it basically shows the growth from one year to the next. Okay. So anyway, you're going to go through the diagram. Now, it is your option to use this fancy diagram where everything's labeled, or you can just simply, if you're comfortable enough, get out a twig and go through it on a twig if you think you can find everything. So, because obviously it would be better to find it out on an actual twig. But I thought the diagram would be good for tonight as an intro. So, so anyway, both sensors, whether you're doing the younger version or the older version, you're going to go through that with them about the twigs. And then the second part. If you are kindergarten first grade, we are going to be playing a game called the Twin Twins Game. And there's going to be two matching sets of label twins. And over here in the box, it shows which ones we have. So we have aspen, apple, white ash, buckeye, oak. So anyway, I kind of organize these like this. And basically, it says on the directions you're going to um, Spread out the twigs from one of the two matching sets, okay, and have the children sit around those twigs. So you can make like a little circle or something. And then you're going to put the twigs in the middle, and then you're going to hide the other twig somewhere else in the room, like near where you are. So there's two sets. So one where the kids are, one far away, a little bit away. And then um, you're going to have a student uh, select a twig and then have the student select the twig and then facing away from the group the child should describe the twig and say what shape it is what color what texture that type of stuff and then are the buds alternate or opposite that type of thing and then they have to um identify it and have the other i don't know i didn't even read all the way through this um i believe that it's like a little game and they um Place that students cannot see them. Okay, have the students select a twig from the duplicate pile facing away from the group. One child should describe the twig, and then the rest of the group has to choose the correct twig from the pile. Okay. And then there are the student that is describing the twigs, or it could even be a parent helper if it is an issue at that age. Um, they're going to have these cards. So, like, let's say it's the Buckeye. So here's this. It's actually going to say the name of the tree on there for the twig. And then get the fuck guy out. So they're going to say it's light grayish brown. It's smooth with some small ridges. And then the bud is reddish brown and with a large terminal bud at the end and the opposite branch. And it has leaf scars on it and then they try to match it with the other set. So it's just basically a big matching game. If you want to turn it into kind of like an I spy, you can also do that, like I spy, a large from the butt. So, but they have to know the information from the diagrams from the get-go to kind of, and, and some of this will be a little bit hard for kindergarten, first grade, and you can, you know, make it as hard or as easy as you want matching these. But they all have, they also, I don't know if you notice, they're all marked, labeled with a letter. Like this is letter D, and it matches letter B. So if worse comes to worse and they're still not getting it, then you can go to letter D, and then, then you, they can see the similarities. So did you have a question, Amity? I just need tutoring later. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, so I put the matching sets together, but when you go to sit down to do the center, you're going to be separating the twigs. 
and then at the very end of the day, putting them back in together. But the kids are sitting, they're, like they're all sitting around the four twigs. Yeah, and then you'll have twigs. one student sitting away, or even the parent volunteer, with the twigs up back here. A whole another set of same twigs labeled with letters, and then you read the descriptions, and then they have to find the one in the circle that matches the description. So why do you take one away? Um, because you're gonna have this set here that they're all looking at, right? Okay, and then the other one that they're gonna match with it, and then at, by the end of the game or whatever, all of this is matched up. Okay. So yeah, you'll have two piles. One will be the the, oh, the pile for everybody to look at. The other pile, yeah. the kid will just go pick out and start describing with his back to everybody else, and they'll be looking through these twigs, saying, "Ooh, okay, yes, I see that, or I don't see that." Mm -hmm. But do they get that card also? They can have the card. I think. Yeah, if you want them, give them the card. But yeah, that's just. Card. And then maybe maybe you even want to uh, like have the student who guesses the right card or whatever they get all of this or something. Like have a little reward. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Right. And that's why I was saying the volunteer probably needs to read the description and maybe have a little helper student or something or whatever that's going to go get the book. So, but this is all in here and it's in this bin. And then also we always when it's the super hands-on centers we always have magnifying glasses and stuff like that. And then the second part of this is for the older kids, or slightly older kids, and it involves this giant trash can. So you will find this in the elf closet, and you're going to lay out all these twigs. They are huge. Um, I consider cutting them down, but I think they're cooler being big. So, and they're all labeled with a color. And then this one is called, if you want to lay these out, you Okay. There's one that we all have to be very beware of, and it is a hawthorn. And it's a super duper pokey thorn bush. So, you can lay these out. This is on the back side. And this is called Twig King. And before you get started, you want to talk about what keying is and explain that keying is a way to identify an object by progressing from one set of directions to the next. So if it, your thing doesn't fit the description, then you move on to the next. And then this is a kind of a description of males and females. And this is an example of keying. So you have a male and a female. This is a correlation between humans and trees. Yes. We can't so, see it. It's good. Okay. Okay. I'm just gonna try to get it so we can see the whole thing. Okay, there we go. So the two branches go out male and female, and then from there, different colors of hair, blonde, brown, black. So we can talk about human characteristics and how we could almost key each other as humans. And then do they have curly or straight hair? Curly or straight? And then that type of thing, and then the same thing for the female. And then you can go in detail as far as you want to on humans. Okay? So you don't want to spend a whole lot of time on this, but just to relate the correlation. And then keys exist for many items in nature birds, fish, wildflowers, etc. To use a key, one must use the correct option each time the object is named. So where that goes with this is you have a with key. Each student will have one of these. Okay, and so it says um, there are six twigs, they're all labeled by colored tape. And then there is a key for the volunteer in this unit. So each one of them, the lodgepole pine is going to have a green piece of tape on it. So all these different colors. So you're not going to feel like you don't know how to guide and direct the kids. It's pretty pretty cheat sheet there for you. But anyway, what you're going to do is each each child will have one of these in the group, and then it says to um, after you've tried keying out trees, what I just showed you, hand out have the children how to use a key, pass out the laminated twig sheets, one twig per student, and one twig per student. So each of the, let's say you have six kids in your group or whatever or less, 
each kid is going to have their own giant twig. Okay? And then they're going to go through the sheet and they're going to match up the characteristics of the particular twigs. So they're going to be kind of working on their own, trying to figure it out. And um, make the twig diagram sheets. Okay, and then you can use hand lenses in this one too. Okay, and then they need to be pointing out like the leaf scars and the bud scales and things like that. And then, so it starts out, my twig has no leaves. So if you were the lucky one that actually had this, you're like, oh, my twig has no leaves. So obviously I have this. And then um, if that's the case, my twig has evergreen needles, my, you identify this as saying this is a logical line. Okay, so that student is done. So they're going to get done really quickly and they can just kind of watch the other kids or help them out in discovering their twigs. Now just for the budding botanists out there, a normal key, my twig has no leaves, would go down and have about 15 steps about whether the, yes. the needles are, you know, what color and the length and all this and this and this, but we've massively um, simplified. Yes. Because yes. we don't want to go through all those steps. No. Okay, so then if they've gone from there, then they go to step two. Um, so if it has no leaves, they go to step two. <laughs> okay, my twig has leaf scars and buds that are opposing. Okay, and then my twig has leaf scars and buds that are alternating. So you're going to be looking for the buds on the trees and seeing which are on the twigs and which ones are opposing and alternating. So if it's opposing, they're going to go to three. If you stand back and read it from the screen, so oh, that's right. Yeah. Okay. That's great. I'm sorry. But you'll have to change your position because you're always going to be in somebody's place. Sorry. <laughs> okay. But anyway, you just keep going down through the steps. So if you reached, my twig has leaf scars and buds that are alternating, go to four. Okay. And then you're going to go all the way down to like, you're going to be picking out the hawthorn. Make sure that's where we put that. So the hawthorn. Okay. So the hawthorn is described as my twig has spines or thorns. So then they would know that this is theirs and they would know it's a hawthorn. So it's just a way of going through to identify which tree you have. So, and then all the way down to the final one is aspen. This one's really big. Aspen would be my twig as lentils that are hard to see. Okay, so, and this one might even like have some balls on it too, but we didn't put that in the description sheet. So, anyway, and then you guys can just discuss you know, how you figured it out. Each kid can share their branch and what characteristics it had and that type of stuff. So, and that's it for this one. So the outline definitely says to let each child do their own branch. You'll have to gauge your group and see, um, especially with that Hawthorne, I don't know if you want a child handling that the whole entire center. And I might, in my kids' class, I, if I had the center, I think I'd just do one twig at a time and let them go through one at a time, the whole group talking about each twig individually. Mm -hmm. yeah. Any questions?